So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and as you can see we got some nice new goodies on the desk right here especially this monitor because I wanted to create an iPad only desk setup but really kind of take advantage of the iPad Pro and find the perfect monitor to give me the best experience if I'm going full iPad Pro because I know a lot of people have been debating going iPad only and I wanted to give you guys kind of the best desk solution for that situation and I think I think I found it everybody but without further ado let's get into this desk setup. So to get this video started, the first thing that we got to talk about, especially if you're new to the channel, is the iPad that I'm using for this desk setup. So I have the M1 iPad Pro, the absolute base model, the 12.9 inch. So I do have the mini LED display, Thunderbolt with the new M1 processor and all that good stuff, right? So the 12.9, 128 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, and then also no cellular, so only Wi-Fi because I just decided I'm at home a lot, I don't really need the data. I thought I did prior to the pandemic, but now I'm in a situation where I'm always on Wi-Fi and I don't really need that. But that is the iPad that we're rocking, and then on the iPad itself, we have two things, right? We have the paper-like screen protector, which channel sponsor, definitely check them out, first link in the description. And then we have the Pitaka Mag Easy kind of slim case. And keep that accessory in mind, because we're gonna come back to that when it comes to actually setting up the iPad Pro. But that is what we have with the physical iPad Pro, and then I got the Apple Pencil down here, if you guys can see that. But for the actual desk itself, this has been my tried and true desk. I've had this desk for about a year and a half now. It's got a couple dinks and bruises right from all the moves that we've had, but this has been my tried and true. This is a desk by Autonomous. It is a standing motorized desk. It's got four programmable keys, the up and down, you can go from 29.5, I think it's inches? It's gotta be inches, yeah, 29.5 inches all the way up to about 70 inches. So you could be anywhere from like 4'10 to like eight feet tall and you can still stand, sit, do whatever you need to do with this desk. And I got it in this nice white tabletop uh, wood finish, which I've absolutely loved. It gives it a good kind of stormtrooper look because all my accessories and my devices are honestly dark green color, probably like gray, black, sometimes brown with that kind of stuff. So having kind of a white canvas on the bottom of everything has been absolutely spectacular. And I love this desk, could not recommend it enough. Yes, it's a little bit pricey. I think they're, they range anywhere from like 600 to like 1200 bucks. And, but for the money, it's been worth it. Like I said, it's got a couple dings and dunks, but it's not the desk's fault. It's, it was a mover's fault, honestly, but it still works perfectly. The legs and the motors, super, super sturdy, super strong, and it's never had any issues with pretty much a ton of weight on here. I've even put myself on here and been able to lift myself up. So that is the desk that we're rocking with this iPad Pro desk setup. So the next item that we're gonna talk about, and this is this the big gun over here. This is the new 32 inch monitor by BenQ. The exact number is the, I had to write it down. It is the EW3280U, right? So that is the, the build number or the model number for this monitor is again, 32 inch 4K HDRI, which is their technology we're gonna to touch on in a second. But there's two big reasons, or I guess three technically, that I got this monitor in particular. Because if you guys have been following the channel before this one, we had a 29 inch ultra wide monitor. It wasn't curved, it was by LG. It was, it was great for the price. It was about $180 to $250, I think, when I got it. And I did get it at like one of those wholesale stores, you know, Costco, Sam's Club. And you know, for the money, it worked. It was perfect, it was fine. It had pretty much everything you needed. But for iPad uses and iPad situations, the aspect ratio just didn't make any sense. So in steps in this BenQ monitor, the 32 inch, and you can tell it's a very, very tall monitor, very different from what I'm used to. And the reason is because it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And again, the iPad Pro is basically a square, right? It's almost a square. I wanna say it's a four by three or a three by two, I wanna say. So it's very square when it comes to iPad Pro. It, if it was four by three, then it would fit perfectly. But you can see that there's a little bit of black bars right here. So I believe the iPad is a three by two aspect ratio and that's why it's not fitting perfectly. But you can see that it works a lot better. So that was the main reason. The main reason the aspect ratio and then the second thing was that it does connect via USB-C as opposed to HDMI. It does have two HDMI ports on the back, but it also has a main USB-C hub, which is directly connected to this iPad Pro. It charges the iPad Pro and feeds video to the iPad Pro. And then one of the biggest deterrents from my last monitor with the iPad Pro, no matter how I connected it, whether with a USB-C hub or HDMI or whatever the case may be, there was no speakers on that monitor. And whenever you plug an external monitor into your iPad Pro, it defaults to those speakers, whether or not it has speakers built into that monitor and you can't get rid of it unless you put like a Bluetooth headphones on or a Bluetooth speaker on the side. So it automatically defaults to the speaker system inside of the monitor. 
And again, my LG monitor did not have any speakers, so it was always so annoying. Like I needed to have headphones, which wasn't a huge deal, but sometimes I just want to listen to things out loud and edit with video out loud and things like that. But now, BenQ, this monitor has built-in speaker system, which has been absolutely amazing, super loud, and I'm just very happy with this monitor so far. I've had it for about a week. They did send it over, and they are watching this for the first time just with you. They didn't tell me what to say. They just wanted my honest review on it. So far for the week that I've had it, it's been great for this iPad Pro, but I'm gonna have a full review on this actual monitor. I just kinda wanted to tease a little bit and show it off, because it's pretty awesome. But again, I'm gonna use this for about a month or so, give you guys a full long-term review to see if this monitor is worth it, because again, it's not really that cheap. It's about 600 bucks depending on when you get it. So again, if you're gonna make a purchase for a monitor like that, it's better, it better be working well long-term, so stay tuned for a long-term review. Oh, and it brings a controller. Like this thing feels more like an awesome TV built for computers and for iPads as opposed to like a monitor that happens to also play some like multimedia stuff. Cause this thing is a tank. It's very awesome. I don't know. It's just, it's very cool. It's very different from what I'm used to. And I've been loving it, especially like I said, for the iPad Pro. Okay, so now let's talk about what the iPad Pro is actually sitting on. And I told you guys to remember that Mag Easy case that the iPad has on it. Now this Mag Easy case, it, ha it has a couple of functions, right? The first one, it originally came out to give you side rail protection while using your iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. So it's a very thin case. I believe it's like 0.5 millimeters in thickness, so like ultra thin. It clips onto the back of your iPad Pro. It has a three pin connector pass through, which allows it to still be used while on the Magic Keyboard while having that on there. So it's an amazing thing to have. It does give you added protection, right? But then this year, what Pitaka did was like, hey, let's get this Mag Easy case, slap on some more magnets, and then give it an actual stand that can work as a dock for whenever you need to actually use it on a stand, right? So that is what this is kind of transformed into. So the iPad Pro is sitting on the new Pitaka Mag Easy stand, which just came out, and this thing is very sturdy. It follows that bit the Pitaka kind of aramid fiber aesthetic, which I've grown to love. I have the cases on my phone, like you've seen on the iPad. Now I have this guy. I have, I have it on my AirPods Pro case. So I have a lot of this aramid fiber, carbon fiber look, and I really like it. So the fact that they came out with something this sturdy, this nice, this sleek, that can easily hold up the iPad Pro in any orientation that you want has been awesome. And not only that, one of the biggest things about this stand is that when you do kind of change orientation, you go from landscape to portrait, the first thing is that it gives you 360 in terms of how far you can turn. You're not just stuck on 90 degrees and 180 for the two modes, you can actually flip it all the way around so you can have the iPad on any side of your desk because again, the iPad only has one port on one side to give you that full secondary monitor support, right? And then the second thing that I really like about this is the magnet. So the magnet is super strong and the build quality has been amazing. Now it does come with a magnetic kind of like patch. So if you don't have the Mag Easy case, because that is a separate cell, so that's a separate item that you would have to buy, you can actually just slap the magnet onto the back of the iPad Pro, which I hate doing. I'm never gonna put like a sticker magnet on the bare back of my iPad Pro. The only thing that I would put on the bare back of the iPad Pro is a D-brand scheme, which I've done before. But when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'd rather just get a case, you know, get a super thin case, maybe put that magnet on the case if you want to save some money, or get the actual proprietary case from Pitaka. And then the last thing that this little stand has is actually a wireless charger, right? It has a wireless charger, it gives you up to 7.5 watts of charging. So this is perfect for AirPods Pro, you know, your headphones, you can charge your phone with it, things like that. I actually don't have it plugged in because I don't need it right now. I kind of just use this as a stand for the time being because I'm gonna show you the actual wireless charger that I use on the other side of my desk. But that is what the iPad Pro is sitting on and I absolutely love this. I've had this also for about two weeks. And again, I'm just very impressed with the overall sturdiness, the build quality, you know, what it's made out of. It's been loving this stand. And so far, one of the higher quality stands that I've been using. And now if we move towards the middle of the desk, right? Cause this is where we have pretty much how we interact with the iPad Pro. So I have four things on here. So on the bottom, you see my Orbit Key XL mat. This thing has been with me for a few months now and I think it's sick. It's the coolest, kind of desk mat or like the most advanced desk mat that you can get that doesn't have like RGB lighting. So RGB I think came and went, now everything has RGB, so no more RGB for me. This one is by like a company named Orbit Key, like I mentioned before, and it's got two cool tricks up its sleeve, right? First, it's huge, right? That's not really a trick, but I'm just gonna let you know that XL mat is huge. I got the XL mat thinking that it wouldn't be that big because normally I get XL mats and they're, you know, the size that I want. So I got the XL mat this time, and this one is really big. So if you guys don't have a big desk, get the regular size one, I'm telling you right now. Save your money, save the hassle of returning the XL one, and get the smaller one. But if you go onto this actual mat, the two cool things that it has is that it's got two layers, right? So it's got the top layer made out of leather, and on the bottom, you can kind of, there's like a little hiding spot made out of felt, another layer, where you can kind of put paper or like 
post-it, basically anything that's like super thin that you kind of need at a glance. And then the second thing that it has is this little like divot on the top, which A, can hold your Apple Pencil because it, there's magnets on there, right? So there's magnets in there. And the reason there's magnets in there is because it's got a little like magnetic cable organizer that slides back and forth. So if you do have something that you're charging, let's say you gotta charge your wireless keyboard, you kind of slide the cable through there and then you don't have any clutter with cables and things like that. So very simple design, but also very intuitive. And there's a lot of nice like functional use cases as opposed to like something being expensive just because it looks cool, right? So, and then also this, <laughs> this like magnetic organizer for your cable is very heavy. It's almost like you can use this as a paperweight as well. But that's awesome, that is by OrbitKey. And then on top of that, I have, like I said, how I interact with the iPad. I've got two ways of mouse input, right? I have a classic, my classic MX Anywhere has two mouse, and then I have Apple's Magic Trackpad. So the Magic Trackpad for the iPad Pro is probably the best way to go. And let's see how the Magic Mouse, I hear the Magic Mouse is actually pretty good for the iPad Pro, but I don't have one. Because the Logitech one, it works perfectly for iPad Pro, but there's like in, like a, an instance of miss. Like, like something a little bit that's missing, like very, very minuscule and like you can only notice it if you're used to using the trackpad. So the trackpad is my main form of using the iPad Pro. And then I have my keyboard, my X1 Slim by Satechi. Absolutely love it. It's the closest thing you can get to like the Apple keyboards in my opinion. And I have an Apple keyboard and that one's also great, but I just kind of like this aesthetic a little bit better. And then one of the final things that I do have on my desk, all the way on the left hand side, is a wireless charger. It is a six in one by a company called Hardsider Labs. And I believe that this is probably the closest I've seen a company get to what Apple wanted to do when it came to air power, right? Air power was this kind of math that you can place any iDevice down there that has wireless capabilities to charge it with no issues on kind of fitting where the coil is supposed to be. And obviously you have software integration with air power or you're supposed to. Now this has no software integration, obviously this is a third party accessory, but this has got to be the one wireless charger that I've seen where I can put my phone anywhere and it will charge it. Now it does, it does have a little bit of lag. So there's about a three second lag before it actually picks up and starts charging the device. Cause I think it's trying to look for which coil to light up and which coil is the closest to actually charge your device. But again, you can put your phone anywhere on there and actually charge. You can charge with the three different devices on the mat itself. You can charge your Apple watch as you can see on there. And then you can also on the back, there's a USB A out and a USB C out. So one thing that I have noticed is I've used this one for about two months now. First of all, I love the aesthetic, love the build quality. It's got like this nice soft felt also on the top, but it's also very sturdy and heavy made out of metal. It's not plastic at all. But one thing that I did notice, if you do use the ports on the back, right? Cause I like to use the USB-C port to charge my iPad Pro sometimes if need be, if it's on the Magic Keyboard. And one thing that it does do, if you have two or more devices wirelessly charging on this device, sometimes it'll cut out the power to the product that's being charged by a physical cable. So keep that in mind, it doesn't really mess anything up, it still charges everything, it just charges it slower. And just know that the more stuff you put on there, the slower it's gonna kind of divvy up all the energy and all the charging speed to all the devices that you have on there. So that one's by Hard Cyber Labs, highly recommend it, I absolutely love it. It replaced the, the big one that I had before that I had for like six months by Pitaka also, which that one was also a six in one. But that is pretty much everything on this desk setup. I wanted to keep it as minimal as possible. Again, only things that I really, really need with me for this iPad Pro desk setup, because this is where I come to edit videos. This is where I come to kind of get work done. This is where I come to answer comments and make sure that everything on the YouTube channel is running smoothly, right? I don't want any other distractions. And that's what I think the iPad Pro is. It is the ultimate single task machine, in my opinion. If you find a way to get from point A to point B on your task and you need to get it done, get it done on the iPad Pro because you're gonna get it done quicker, more efficiently, and it's gonna be honestly a little bit more fun too with the touchscreen and everything like that. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. And the last thing that I do like about this is I have my Magic Keyboard always with me right here. So if I ever need to actually get up, I just unplug the iPad Pro, plop it off there, throw it into here without having to like take off any cases or anything, and then I'm on the go. So it's a perfect kind of, it's almost that perfect sit and dock situation that we want with the iPad Pro. We're just waiting on that real secondary monitor support. And stay tuned because I have somebody that reached out to me about a new project that they're doing about some form of secondary monitor support for the iPad Pro and it's not shift screen. So keep that in mind. If you guys made it to the end of the video, you guys are amazing, but that's gonna do it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if the sound got better, please, because we're still working on getting a better sound quality and soundproofing the room and things like that. But I know this was a long video. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.